We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Welcome everybody to the North Charlestown Church of God. You that will be watching by web, we certainly want to welcome you also here tonight. Uh, again, we're going to get started here in just a few minutes. This is our Wednesday night service. We have at 7 p.m. I'm sure that this way things have been going, this will be on the web probably even tonight. It'll be on there Thursday, probably all day, so you're welcome to watch that. Or if you know somebody that would like to, they're more welcome to. And I try to text that out for them. And again, uh, of course, we still have our Sunday morning, 10.45 a.m. service. Try to have that on the web by 7 on Sunday. Steve Hester still doing the singing up from the square. It's on Saturdays at 10 a.m. And everybody's welcome to all those services. And the temperature is going to be awesome, they said. We're going to have a good one this Saturday. <laughs> so, and also our teenagers are meeting back here in the back once again. So uh, again, we welcome any teenagers that want to come back there. And I see Millie come back here with us tonight. Glad to see her. Teresa and the little baby there. Emil, good to have you all here tonight. And uh, others here, we appreciate you being here. But uh, anyway, that's the schedule of our service. I want to let you all know that uh, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, it'll be uh, National Day of Prayer. The uh, North Clark Ministerials Association, we're going to be meeting up there on the, at the gazebo. That uh, Again, that'll be May the 6th up there actually where Steve does the singing and stuff and we'll be meeting up there for prayer and we've got a line up of people doing that and I think they'll be doing the national anthem and some other things. Some of you have been out there before. I don't remember we were did that last year or not with the COVID but uh, again we'll be doing that this uh, not tomorrow but a week from tomorrow so I, I want to start reminding us of that. Also uh, letting you know that we've still got the box out there if anybody wants to bring in shoes. I know some people already have ask if you would if you got a rubber band to just try to what was it Laura said uh, something about two soul oh what is it, was it soul? something about soul soulmates that's it so, as long as you got two of them you can tie together and they got the soul on them that's fine so appreciate that and like I say we've already got a few out there but if you want to bring them in that'll be for that group called pure that we had here this past week so uh, on Sunday when uh, Laura Crusoe had shared with us about that. So anyway, those are some of the things uh, going on. Still praying for those that are going through some trying times. And uh, Libby Smith, like I say, she had a granddaughter by the name of Ashley. I'm not for sure that she's not having surgery the last day of this month. Seemed like the 30th possibly. And then something being done in uh, May also. Still praying for Pat. She's got her heart monitor on now. We want to pray that everything's going good with that. Doris Adkins, I don't see Ben here tonight, so I know she's still in a lot of pain. I know when she was here last Wednesday, I, I could tell she wasn't feeling real well. So uh, again, we want to keep them in prayer. And then I've got others. Brian Hill had called and said something about food poison that uh, he'd ask prayer. And then also uh, Donna Pierce had called for one of her, I guess it would be her great-granddaughter, Rainy Smith, just a little baby also that's having some possible heart problems. So they'll be dealing with that. So. We'll be praying for all the little ones for sure. Uh, I know you all are having some things you might want to talk about later if you want to, but we'll certainly keep keep all these in prayer. And then uh, also Miss Mobley, Lillian Mobley had called in and wanted prayer for, is it her sister? Daughter in law. Daughter in law, okay, Nancy Mobley, and then for herself also. They've asked prayer also. But anyway, just a few, and we'll be having prayer here at the beginning because we'll be having our communion tonight at the end of the service. So we'll be doing prayer at the first. But right now we're going to, well, has anybody got a testimony tonight, something you want to share? Anything good? To, yes, Gloria? Uh, yeah, uh, first one, and Sammy, that's your own time, and that's not your time. Uh, amen, amen. Somebody's asking about that other day. <laughs> anybody else? Yeah. Yes, mother. Thank God for you. Happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> Happy birthday. thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that too. So. Anybody else today? Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I know some people, I know with that Facebook thing, I'm not very good on it. And I know when I first got on there, I thought the day of when I first got saved, and people were telling me happy birthday. I thought, well, that's pretty good on my yeah, spiritual birthday. But I did that just to keep it from, I didn't know what all the legal out. Anyway, I didn't want everybody knowing this, that, and the other. I didn't know how Facebook worked. But uh, anyway, today is our birthday, and I appreciate all the, I've got cards, I've got things on Facebook, and a lot of you have told me that, and I appreciate it. You didn't, 
if you didn't do nothing, that's fine. Just being my friend and caring about me, that's good good enough. And we love all of you, so appreciate that. Right now, I'm going to ask Bob to come up here and lead us in music. And if you will, go ahead and stand with us, if you will. Now, the first song we're going to sing tonight, you're going to find in your book. But I think everybody knows the words to it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. would turn to him number 375, higher ground, 375.
our country and our leaders praying for this land. Uh, me and Sandra had our shots yesterday. She had a little bit of a backlash today, but she's doing better tonight, but she could still use your prayers if both of us can. It uh, leaves you a little bit sore and disoriented sometimes. <laughs> so just, to, just the least I could say about it anyway. But uh, again, for all the families that have had a lot, lost loved ones, we certainly want to pray for them. I know I've got a, a memorial thing that i got to do for a family this Friday also. So we want to pray for all those that have had loved ones to pass away. So taking prayer requests from you all tonight. Prayer requests. Our family and Roger Adams' family, I heard he passed today. Oh, Roger did? I heard that. Oh, wow. Okay. Millie? Um, my grandma has lung cancer, and she just started a new treatment, and so it'll go well. Oh, okay. Chrissa? For the little man right here. Oh, okay. To give us strength. Oh, okay. A little Atticus there. Still having some situation with eyes, but we're going to be praying and believing for good things. Bob? My nephew, Shane. Phillips, mm -hmm. one that's got the mercy, uh, he's doing somewhat better, but they're still trying to keep it from getting into his bones. Okay. So he's, he still needs a prayer. Okay. Other prayer requests tonight, Mom? Uh, Mother? Um, Katie Kimball this morning sick. She got her shot yesterday, too, so she oh. did this thing properly. Oh, okay. I'll be glad when these shots and COVID and everything's out the door for sure, but uh, anyway. Other prayer requests? Anybody else through here? Sandra? Family and friends. Okay. Anybody else tonight? Prayer request? Okay. And again, we got that prayer book of remembrance down here. And like I said, uh, we've mentioned uh, again Miss Mobley. And again, you said it was her daughter in law, uh, Nancy Mobley. We want to keep her in prayer tonight also. And then our prayer book of remembrance down here. Anytime you've got a prayer request you want to put on there, you're more than welcome to do so. But. Uh, Let's agree in prayer if you want to stand and pray, if you want to sit, I don't care, whatever makes you feel right with the Lord, but uh, let's agree in prayer here tonight. We certainly want to continue to pray for these needs and uh, especially these little babies. We certainly have a heart for them and uh, everything that's going on for them. Let's agree in prayer here tonight. Father God, we just uh, come to you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And... Uh, we ask you tonight, Lord, that first of all, you'd search all of our hearts, Lord. If there's anything that would hinder our prayers tonight, we just pray that you'd uh, cover it in the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus of over all of us, Lord. We, we need our faith. We need our confidence in you. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to work in so many people's lives, Lord. Uh, God, we know that, uh, again, these ones that have had surgeries and those that are facing procedures, we pray for all of them that are healing and recovering. Uh, Lord, again, for this Ashley of Libby Smith's granddaughter, we pray for everything to go well for her, uh, for Pat with her heart monitor, and again for Doris. We just pray that you're going to help her get through this pain and the hurt that she's going through, Lord, and again, just so much of it. Lord, there's some, some unspoken prayer requests, and, and Lord, some of them are so urgent, Lord, I don't even know how to, to bring them forth, but uh, Lord, you know exactly what they are, and uh, how hurtful and how harmful they are to some people that just need a, a touch from the Master's hands. We do pray for that David McIntosh, that you'll touch him. Uh, we do pray for Bob with his nephew, Lord, uh, again for a healing power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we pray for, our, again, Bobby Dale Shepherd, still lifting him up, the James family, Mary Irene Young. Uh, Lord, for all those uh, that I've mentioned and others that have mentioned here tonight, Lord, we just lift each and every need up to you. Uh, we do pray for the families that have had loved ones to pass away, and some of them, whether we're for sure or not about them, we just pray, God, that you'd be with them and their loved ones. And uh, God, just, Father, watch over all. Lord, we do pray for this country, for its leaders. Uh, we pray for this nation to truly be a nation under God with the liberty of Jesus Christ. Again, for our military, our police departments, our fire departments, our medical departments, uh, our EMSs, our farmers, for all those that protect and serve, that you'll protect them, Lord. Uh, we pray for mothers that are carrying babies also, Lord, that haven't yet uh, brought them forth. We pray for the safety of the children as well as the babies and for everything to go well with them also. Uh, we pray for the organization that uh, come in here Sunday with Laura that uh, again they'll continue to be successful as they're trying to help with uh, abusive situations and we pray for them to do well in their collections and things 
and for that organization as well as Choice to be blessed of you to, to reach out and touch people's lives and especially for little children. And uh, again, you said, forbid not the little ones to come unto you, for such is the kingdom of heaven. We certainly want to lift them up to you. We pray over that prayer book of remembrance, prayer list that some of us may have in our homes, if not all of us, and whatever those needs are. Again, for Miss Mowley and her daughter-in-law, uh, we pray for them as well. And uh, again, for Donna Pierce, as she was asking prayer for Sydney's baby tonight, little uh, Rainy Smith. Pray that, uh, again, that heart, whatever was going on, will be okay. And again, Lord, we just lift all these needs up to you. And uh, Father, be with us in his service tonight. Fill it through your presence and power. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You may be seated if you please. <laughs> I thought that was kind of neat. I was waiting for the rapture. <laughs> I thought now all I need is Steve to play the trumpet and we'll be ready. <laughs> It'll be perfect tonight. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, that'd be all right. Uh, we're, we're in the book of Daniel tonight. and uh, I'm going to be reading some commentary on that tonight also a little bit. Uh, time permitting here. But here in Daniel chapter 2, we had started on this chapter last week. We finished the first and went into the second one. And uh, we're dealing with Daniel, you know, again, him and those other three Hebrew children had been brought to the, the land of Babylon, again, astrologers, soothsayers, and, and prime children that were brought into this country. And we talked about how that Babylon would basically push their customs and push their beliefs and everything on these children and train them up, not in the ways of our Lord, but in the ways of their false gods and everything else. Of course, we realize that Daniel and his other three Hebrew children would not bow down to the things that they were asking to do, even such as eating meat that was unclean, and then some meat that was uh, given to false idols and everything else, and they wouldn't touch it. And again, we, we realize that God made a way for them to get past that. Uh, we, we realize that uh, oh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was getting ready to have all these wise men killed uh, again, there in the Babylonian Empire because he'd had a dream and he couldn't remember it. And uh, it had troubled him. And he'd asked not only for them to give the interpretation of the dream, but to tell him what the dream it was his, their selves. And you know, again, whether you interpret a dream or not, saying, I, I think this is what God means about it, for you to be able to tell somebody what they just dreamed, that's hard enough. I, I know when I've had dreams, I can't remember 90% of the time. When I do have them, not that I ever do a lot, but... Uh, a lot of times I haven't, but uh, some of you can relate to that. But anyway, I want to go to uh, verse 30 tonight. We'll start back there again here in Daniel chapter 2. And Lord, we just ask you to bless and anoint this time here together. And Father, let your presence be made known to all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Daniel is uh, talking on the behalf of all the wise men there. And it says... But as for me, the secret is not re revealed to me when he's talking to Nebuchadnezzar because he said, I'm going to give you the dream and the interpretation. But he said, I need a little time. And him and his three buddies had went and prayed and talked to the God of heaven. And God had given him this interpretation and also the dream. It says, it's not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for, your, for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation of the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. Thou, O king, saw us, and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. And again, that word terrible is actually a word we'd use today when we say awesome many times. And again, we think terrible is bad. This is awesome, and it could be bad in a sense. But again, in, in such a just great or big, whatever you call it. But it says, The image's head was of, of fine gold, its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of brass, its legs of iron, its feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till a, that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon its feet that were of iron and clay, and brake them into pieces. 
Then was the iron, the clay, and the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smoked the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Last week I asked a question, who is that stone? Again, this is a dream. And again, we're going to be given the interpretation. That stone is none other than a rock. Who is the rock of our salvation? I mean, Jesus is the rock that don't roll. And I mean, He's a solid rock that we've had our foundation found on. Uh, if you look in, uh, I believe it's Psalms 118 and also uh, Luke 20, I believe it talks about the stone that the builders rejected. He's the same stone that, again, He'll build everything up on. And again, the people that are rejecting Him, they'll be like the shaft of the wind, just kind of blown away too. But uh, again, that was talking about Jesus Christ in the New Testament as well as in the Old Testament also. And it goes on here. It says, This is a dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And whosoever the children of man dwell, the beast of the field, and the fowls of the heaven hath he given unto the hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. He's talking to Nebuchadnezzar, the ruler of the Babylonian Empire. We're talking about what they call the time of the Gentiles. Uh, at one time, you've heard of us talking about monoc monocracy, democracy, and theocracy. Theocracy is when God rules and reigns. Uh, democracy is when it's by the people, for the people. And then you have monocracy, where you actually, and I say that a little bit slurry, but it talks about when you have a king lead with leadership. But at one time, you know, basically God was the leader of the, of the world. And again, one day He will be again. And it's going to be through His Son, Jesus Christ. But this is where all of a sudden the Gentile powers begin to become over the whole known world at this time. And I'll give you some dates on that here in just a little bit. And He's telling Nebuchadnezzar, you are that first head of gold. You are the king, basically, of Babylon. So Babylon is the first one that we're actually talking about. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things, and as iron breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. What you may or may not realize is that the ten toes that we read about here is actually in our day and age. This will be the last Gentile nationalities before God sets up His millennial kingdom. And even before that, we'll have, I believe, a seven-year tribulation period. Not only according to Daniel, but there's other places it speaks about that. Everybody is in agreement about all the things. Basically, what we're talking about is end times in a lot of this. And again, I, I believe... Uh, a lot of places you got to dig up more than one place. I don't like to argue with people because people will say, well, I interpret this way. I turn. I'm just sharing with you what I've been reading and studying for years. And again, I believe a lot of this is we're seeing it obviously come to pass. You know, what, one thing that's going to happen in the end time is there's going to be a one world government. Whether you like it or not, uh, governments have been wanting to do this for years. That, you know, we've got NATO, we've got United Nations, all these things. I used to see a sign I said before down in Clarksville that said, get us out of the United Nations. I had no idea why it was there. I, I kind of understand now. And I'm not saying bad or good. I'm just saying I, it makes more sense to me because what's going to happen eventually, I believe, according to Scripture, especially in Revelation, we're going to have a false prophet and we're going to have an antichrist and we're going to have Satan, the leader of all two, or all three of them. And he's going to end up bringing a, a one world government where instead of worshiping God, we're going to worship Satan whether we even know it. You've heard about the uh, not only this image that we're reading about here, but also you've heard about the image of the beast in Revelations. You've heard about the mark of the beast. 
Uh, we talked about in Revelation 13, it talks about people not being able to buy or sell unless they take a mark in their hand or in their forehead. It says, you know, here is wisdom. Let them count the number of the, of the name. Or the, uh, again, that mark that will be given and it's six, uh, three score and six and six, which is scores again is 20, 40, 60. So we got 666. Again, like I said, you've seen that on rock and roll albums. You've seen people kind of make mockery of that and everything. But uh, like I said, years ago I'd asked some people at the place that I worked over at the cabinet company, I, I, I just kind of shot in the dark. You know, a lot of them claim that they read their Bible and studied everything else. And I'm not saying that you got to know everything about the Bible, but I said, if you was given the choice of taking a mark with a 666 in your hand or in your forehead, or not being able to buy or sell to be able to even pay for food, for your groceries, for your children, your family, or anybody else, what would you do? The biggest part of the people I asked had no clue what I was talking about. They said, I guess I'd have to take the mark. And I said, wow. <laughs> Do you know the Bible tells us that if you take that mark, you're basically taking an alliance with Satan. Now, I don't believe everything is the mark of beast. I know people have called things, they call the social security the mark of beast. A lot of people have been concerned about it. I hate to not even bring it up, but even the shots that we've been getting, they've talk, thought about some of that leading up to that. Again, I think you're going to know what that mark is. I don't think it's going to be something that's snuck in you and everything else. But at the same time, people are going to know that. But when Christians sometimes don't even understand that, it's like, you know, if I've got to take this mark with an alliance with this one world dictator that basically sooner or later is going to show himself to be Satan himself, I, I, we're in trouble, folks. <laughs> we better think about it a little bit. But anyway, it, it says, going on here, what verse did I just read there? What was it? 42. 42, okay. And whereas thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with the clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Now, no doubt in my mind, we're talking about eternity there. We're talking about God of heaven. It, it says, and, and it says, shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces, the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an obligation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldest reveal a secret. Remember, Daniel could have been killed because they were going to kill all the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and everybody else. But Daniel had asked for just time for them to pray and seek God and God given this revelation. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king or in the court of the king, we could say here. I want to read just... Uh, some commentary a little bit here tonight on this. When we talk about, and I wish I'd made some print-ups on this, the statue that it talks about. When it talks about the head of gold, it talks about that here in Daniel chapter 2. Later on in Daniel 7, it also gives another dream. There's about three or four different dreams that are being revealed in the book of Daniel that relates to these governmental officials and especially the time of the Gentiles. In Daniel 7, this head of gold is referred to as a lion, and it actually has to do with Babylon, which existed during the time of 626 B.C. to around 539 B.C. Now, when you come to the chest and the arms of silver, it refers to in Daniel 7 as a bear, and then in Daniel chapter 8 as a ram, and that is the Medo-Persians, and they ruled from 539 to 330 B.C., you go to the, uh, again, the third kingdom, 
It talks about the belly and the thighs of bronze. In sub chapter 7, it uh, uses that same government officials as leopard. And then in Daniel 8, as a goat, and that's Greece. Does anybody remember a gentleman by the name of Alexander the Great? I think you've probably heard his name before. Uh, he was actually the one that originally brought forth the victory for Greece at that time and basically took out the Medo-Persians at that time. From what I understand, and again, if I read a little commentary, I don't know if I have time on that, but uh, again, Alexander Great, he didn't live very long, but he conquered all the province of the world, the known world to them in the, in the east, you know, over in the eastern countries. But he got to the point where he would almost cry because he said, I have nobody else to conquer. And I mean, he died at an early age, and then he had uh, four generals that took his place, the north, the south, the east, and the west, and they began to rule. And if we read it, we'll deal with that here. And then we come to the legs of iron. Anybody want to remember who that is? How about the Romans? They, let, they ruled north and south for many years. As a matter of fact, up in about 1400 and something uh, A.D. actually. But they started in 63 B.C. And if you remember, they were here during the time of Jesus. You know, they were basically the ones they were blaming for, you know, crucifying Christ. But we know at the same time, it was basically not just the Jews. It was our sins. You know, Jesus said, no man takes my life, but I lay it down. But they were the ones that were in basically control during AD 70, but they were in control with the Turks and others all the way up into 1400 and something uh, AD. Reading just some commentary on that here tonight, and I don't know that I need to read all of it, but it says, and we done talked about Nebuchadnezzar, I, I'll read it again. In 608 BC, the Babylonian Empire under King Nebuchadnezzar was strong, powerful, and wealthy, aptly fulfilling the position as the image head of gold. Yet, as predicted by Jeremiah in 25-12, the chapter and verse, Babylon was destroyed within 70 years by the rise of Medo-Persia under the rule of King Cyrus. And one night, the Medes and Persians conquered the king of Babylon while, king, while Babylon's king Belshazzar... Do you remember an old saying, the handwriting is on the wall? How many of you like Andy Griffith? <laughs> Everybody said amen, of course, but no, I'm teasing. But at the same time, many a time, Barney or somebody would say, the handwriting's on the wall, the handwriting's on the wall. And people do that today, and they don't even realize that that's actually a biblical term because that's where they come from. As you remember that, that writing, it was all... Meany, meany, echo, euphorosum, and I think and it talks about your kingdom is divided and found wanting when that, that kingdom was destroyed. And actually it had to do with Belshazzar when he brought the, all the golden things from out of the temple that they brought back from Jerusalem. And they were actually worshiping false gods of gold and silver and all of a sudden a hand without nothing with it. Remember that hand began to write on the wall? And that's basically what it, it wrote on there. But anyway, it says... Uh, Belshazzar feasted in his palace using the vessels from the temple in Jerusalem for profane purposes. Belshazzar was shaken from his revelry when the finger of God wrote a verdict of judgment on the wall of the palace. Daniel now, an old man and probably forgotten by the new rulers after Nebuchadnezzar's death, was called up on by the queen mother to interpret the writing. Daniel declared to Belshazzar God's judgment God had decided to finish Belshazzar's reign. Belshazzar had been judged and found wanting. Excuse me. And Belshazzar's kingdom would be divided and given to the Medo-Persians. And again, it talks about what all they did. And then it, it goes on to the Medo-Persian Empire lasted only 207 years until it was destroyed by the swift moving of armies of Alexander the Great in a climatic battle in 331 B.C., the Third World Empire was symbolized by brass, a stronger metal than silver, but a metal of less value. The Greek Empire, based on the democratic governments of the Greek city-states, broke its world empire into four divisions by Alexander's four generals in a supplementary vision. Again, that had to do with them passing away. And I'm not going to read all of this, but it says... Talking about Greece continued to rule from the borders of India to Europe from 331 B.C. until the year 63 B.C. when the Roman army under General Pompey 
successfully attacked the independent kingdom of Israel and captured the temple. Pompey entered the Holy of Holies and stalled the Roman garrisons throughout Palestine, occupying the fortress north of the temple that was later named the Tyre of Antonia after Mark Antonia. Pompey's occupation of Palestine marked the end of the Greek Empire. The fourth world empire of Nebuchadnezzar's vision was represented as two strong legs of iron that break and pieces, all which stood before. This fourth world empire was Rome. One of the characteristics of the Roman Empire was its incredible military might, and Rome transferred the various parts of its empire into an enormous military machine, combined strength with efficient police and judicial system. Rome completed supplement the three preceding kingdoms. Rome's influence was so persuasive that even today, after 2,000 years, many of our governmental institutes, bureaucracies, judicial codes, and languages are based on the system used in the Roman Empire. The fourth world empire of Nebuchadnezzar's vision ruled the known world longer than any other three, exactly as foretold, the Roman Empire split into two portions after the rule of Empire Constantine. The western arm of the empire was based in Rome, and the eastern arm of the empire ruled from Constantinople, today's Attilia, Turkey, barbarians destroyed Rome's influence in the West in A.D. 476, while the Eastern arm of Roman Empire became known as the Byzantine Empire and continued its rule until the defeat of the Turks in A.D. 14 and 53. And then it talks about the, the last part of Nebuchadnezzar's dream concerning the final stage of the world's empire represented by the ten tones of iron and clay God clearly predicted that in the, in the days immediately before the establishment of the Messianic kingdom of the stone cut out of the mountain without hands, there would be a final revival of the Roman Empire consisting of ten nations united together in confederacy. confederacy. Since Israel's rebirth as a nation in 1948, Europe has begun to come together more and more as a united federation for economic trade and security reasons. In 1948, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, known as NATO, was formed to defend Europe against the threat of the mass armies of communist Russia. In 1957, many European nations banded together in a confederation of economic and trade relationships. In 1992, European nations gathered to discuss future moves toward full integration of member economics, utilizing one economic system a common monetary system as well as common defense capability and foreign policies. Today, 15 member states belong to the European nation, and this would have been back in the 90s when this book was written, creating one of the largest economical, political, and military powers in the Western world. Daniel prophesied about a united federation under the revived Roman Empire. For the first time in 2,000 years, a united Europe would be able to fulfill this specific prophecy. And we can see that in our day and age. And just interpreting just a little bit here on verse 34 and 35 where it says, Thou saw us till a stone was cut out. Here's a little bit of commentary. The stone cut out without hands represented Jesus Christ who would utterly destroy the Gentile world empires with a sudden blow at the Battle of Armageddon. This vivid image imagery does not evoke a grudge a gradual conquest, but rather suggests its full-scale destruction of the fourth world kingdom based on Revelation 16, 13, and 19 and 17. The destruction is immediately followed by the establishment of the kingdom of the stone, the kingdom of Christ. That's talking about the millennial kingdom. This vision clearly foreshadows Christ's ultimate victory with the defeat of the Antichrist during the last days. Note also that the stone or rock is used elsewhere in Scripture as a symbol for the Messiah. And again, we could read more and more about that. But again, not trying to bore you with a lot of reading tonight, but at the same time, just trying to give you an idea of some of the things that were represented in that image there. When we get into the third chapter here tonight, if we get into it very much at all, just for the next few minutes, Nebuchadnezzar was caught up into that dream. I mean, he thought pretty, pretty highly of himself being this image of gold. You know, here we've got all these different governments, but I'm the head and I'm gold and I'm the most valuable. Well, Nebuchadnezzar was a heathen, basically. And I think we mentioned that last year. Does God use heathens 
I'm talking about even in political range, and again, I'm not talking about our country necessarily, I'm talking about any country, and especially when we're talking about world war, worldwide powers, that he would use somebody like that. And why, did he, why does he do that? Why does he allow wicked rulers to rule over nations and over kingdoms? Basically because of people's not desiring to follow God anymore. If you keep rejecting God, God will eventually reject what you're doing also. He did that to Egypt time and time again, didn't he? I mean, the Israelites have been turned over to, and again, that's what basically all these Gentile governments are about. But when we come in, has anybody got any comments or any thoughts? Anybody else did any studying on the, again, Daniel and Revelation, Ezekiel or anything? Again, I, we're going through the book of Daniel, so I'm just trying to make it as best I can. I'm trying to share commentary instead of trying to just give opinionations, and again, that is too, but... Uh, Anyway, let's go into Daniel 3 just for a few minutes. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. <laughs> it wasn't good enough just to have his dream as a head of gold. He makes a whole image of gold. Whose height was three score cubits. And remember, a cubit is basically 18 inches. So again, we've got three score, which is 20, 40, 60. 60, that would be 75 feet tall, basically. And the breadth thereof, six cubits, would be nine foot wide. He set it up at the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent together, together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, governors, captains, judges, treasurers, counselors, sheriffs, and all the rulers of the province were gathered together in a dedication of this image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before that image that Nebuchadnezzar set up, and a herald cried aloud to you, and his commanded, O people, nations and language, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, flute the harp, the sackbolt, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and what? Worship, Worship the golden image. Wow. He's preparing to worship this golden image. When you hear the sounds, you hear all this music and these sounds and these blasts in there, you've got to fall down and worship this image. Well, what if you don't want to? Well, that's easy. <laughs> There's always a choice. It says, And whoso falleth not down and worship shall the same hour do what? Be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Remember this story, don't we? Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbolt, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. What will a Jew not do? First of all, he won't eat unclean meat, and he won't eat meat that's worshipped to, to idols. But there's another thing. He won't bow down before an idol. I'm talking about an Orthodox Jew that's following God, of course. And it says, Nations, language, fell down to worship. Uh, we're forward to, let's go to verse 9. Then spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made to declare that every man that shall hear the sound of the, and again I'll just say all these different musicians, shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoso falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And for some reason, Daniel is not included in this, whether his business took him elsewhere because he worked in the gate of the king, but he's not included in these three men here. But we'll see an extra one here in a little bit. It says, O king, have not regarded thee. They, well, they've not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said to them, It is a true Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Come on, boys. <laughs> I'm the king. You've got to do what I say. If I tell you, you've got to go out there and worship that flagpole, and not necessarily the flag, but uh, a tree or anything else, you've got to worship whatever I tell you to. And again, a Jew, somebody that's 
orthodox in our belief, and a Christian should be the same way. We shouldn't bow down to anything else either. It says, now if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of all these instruments and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, it will be okay, basically. But if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. It be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. Basically, that be it. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. If he wants to deliver us out of the fire, that's all right. But either way, he's going to deliver us out of your hand. Because you can kill our body, but you can't kill our soul. Guess what? We've got an eternity with God. And basically, that's what you're saying. We'll die for our belief. But it says, go on here. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than it was what to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind these three Hebrew children to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then those men were bound in their coats, their hoses, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up. The guys that threw them into the furnace died because it was so hot to get them there. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace, then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Why? Wow. Jesus Christ was in there dancing in the fire with them, glory to God. I mean, they were walking through there, and folks, they didn't get burned, singed, or anything, or their clothes, or anything else. And we'll, Lord willing, finish the rest of that chapter up next week. But anyway, again, Nebuchadnezzar got so proud in all his arrogance and everything else because he was noted as this head of the goat, and now he's being shown that the God of heaven don't deal with anybody. Matter of fact, later on you'll see where he says, anybody that says anything against their God... I'll, I'll have them put to death later on. But anyway, that'll be at another time. I'm sure hopefully many of us have studied this already. Any thoughts or any things you want to say on again thus far in the book of Daniel? Any questions or anything you want to bring up? Do you believe we're living in the last days right now? I mean the last of the last days. I mean we're, we're sewing it up pretty good today. And yeah, I know people have said that for years and years. But that's exactly what they said in 2 Peter. That's, that you know, people say since our fathers have passed away, they still say the same thing. One of these days we're going to be surprised, aren't we? Because just like in the days of Noah, when they were eating and drinking and giving them marriage and everything else, finally the flood came and took them all away, didn't it? Except the ones that were on the ark. I hope we're all in the ark of safety, and I hope we can get other people in that same ark. We're going to get ready for communion right now. Uh, you guys that want to play the music, if you do that for us, I appreciate it. And uh, my wife ain't feeling well to come up here, so I'm going to ask Pat if she'll help me this evening with the uh, communion. <coughs> I got my second shot, so I'm getting better at all this stuff, but uh, I'll still put the mask on.
Jesus tonight that again he was crucified. He told him as oft as you do this, do this and remember to me. So tonight first of all we want to hold this bread up to the Lord and we want to remember that body that was broken for us. And I want to pray over it. Lord God we thank you tonight Lord. Tonight as we take of the bread, Lord may we remember the bread of life that was broken, that was bruised, that was wounded, was torn apart for us. And Lord, we, we pray your blessings up over this as we partake in this element right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, I know my cup's bigger than yours tonight. <laughs> I apologize for that. But anyway, as we hold our cup up to the Lord tonight, regardless of what it is, remember what it represents to God. You know, as we hold this cup up to the Lord, we're remembering that His blood was shed for us and we could be, again, have the remission of our sins. Lord, we thank You tonight, Lord, for Your cup of blessings. We pray, God, Your hands upon it. We pray, Lord, as we partake tonight, Lord, that we can partake of the blessings that You've given us through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ through the remission of our sins. Bless and anoint every heart and mind here tonight as we partake of this cup in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys would sing us a hymn and go on and join with us tonight. My Jesus, I love you. I go.